Hello, my name is Tine. In this video I'll show you my new 3D printer I got from Gearbest. It's FLSAN Q5 Delta 3D printer. As usual start with unboxing. I ordered this printer from Germany Warehouse, so it arrived in few days after dispatch without any charges. It's packed and protects so good that even the worst postal service can damage them. On top you can find a manual, checking list and other papers. Manuals are good, printed in colors and it's short and clear. Just follow every step and you got nothing to fail. Then we got three complete pre-assembled axes with motor, belt and carriages. Below is two type of power supply cable, type B and European type F, USB cable, spatula, filament holder, parallel arms, testing filaments, screws and tools, complete pre-assembled printing head, auto level sensor, bottom part with building plate and upper part with complete electronic. Let's take a closer look on each component now. Start with bottom part. It's a single piece of steel with bend and edges for better stiffness. It got three legs and fixed heated bed with thick insulation on the bottom. I don't know exactly but I think that's carbon built plate. It's very thick and solid as hell. It got two cables, one about 2.5 square millimeter for heater and another for temperature sensor. Both got connectors on the end. First thing I notice on that printer is production quality. Steel base is made out of 2 mm steel and there are no single sharp edge from cutting. Every single treat got insert welded to position and everything is nice protected with powder painting. Next one is upper part of the printer or electronic box. Also that one is completely made out of steel. On one side we got power supply socket with built in fuse and switch, USB plug and micro SD card slot. On second side we got LCD touch screen and on third side is extruder. Then we got here assembled printing head with four connectors for fan, cooling fan, heater and temperature sensor. And one more connector from the leveling sensor we can attach to the head to calibrate building plate. Here we got steel spool holder and six links to attach printing head to carriages. And here's the three main axes with stepper motor, limit switch, carriages and belts. Complete pre-assembled. And the last one is tool bag. Inside we can find a screwdriver, few hex key, pliers, testing piece of filament, screws, zip ties, nozzle cleaner and so on. I was surprised about spatula and pliers which come with. It doesn't cost much, but it's a nice guest. So far I unboxed everything and just need a few more minutes to assemble and start printing. But I do a step back and disassemble some interesting pre-assembled parts, so you'll see a few more details before buying. I start with printing head. On first view it looked like E3D V6, but it's a bit different. Heat sink is attached from the bottom to steel base and it got two screws from the side to block the throat, which is without treat as on E3D, so we just push it into heat sink and tie it with two screws. Also heat block is a bit smaller than on E3D. Teflon tube go all the way through the throat up to the nozzle and that's the way it worked the best for me. On the bottom we got also 3D printed part with steel insert where we attach leveling sensor with the magnet. I noticed burned wire around the heater and filament inside of nozzle. That mean every head or entire printer is tested before sale. Steel cover protect hot parts from touching and it's used as a fan holder. One fan is for cooling heat sink which run all the time and one other side is a turbo fan for cooling the parts during print. Next is upper part of the printer or electronic box. Frame steel is a bit thinner than on bottom but it got welded support on needed area so it's pretty solid. Entire printer work on 24 volts so we got here 24 volts 10 amp power supply and the MakerBase Robin Nano motherboard with TMC 2208V2 drivers. All the cables are nicely managed and they are also marked. Touch screen is connected with a ribbon cable. Then we got here a powerful fan for cooling entire electronic box and extruder motor. Outside of housing we got extruder. When I remove the cover I can see that. It's geared extruder but not dual gear for pushing. All the axes got bearing on both sides. 
Here we get a knob to set a spring tension and that not work as indicator of tension which is visible through the cover. Another groove bearing is on the plastic arm. Also income hole got removable corners, so inserting the filament is piece of cake. Of course we got here teflon tube coupling and filament guide to the gear. It's so precise that even a hair can't go past, so it shouldn't be a problem for TPU. I really like the extruder, we can disassemble them with only few screws. And now check the last main part, linear guide. Also that is made completely out of aluminium and metal, the only plastic part is belt and limit switch. With only two screws remove the protecting cover and see the carriage with three wheels, which running on aluminium extruded profile. I just hope I'll see that. One of gear is on extended screw, so setup is simply and accurate. Carriage is made out of 2.5mm steel and it's very solid. Total length of axis must be same every time, so we can tie the belt on one or other side. That's why we got here the belt tensioner. And also cover got hold to assess that screws. On top we got steel motor holder with stepper motor and limit switch with connector. Below is fully metal holder with belt pulley. Holder is welded outside, so it fits perfect to aluminium profile. Parallel arms look good, but the time will show their quality. Carbon stick is glued direct into bearing, so we got nothing to set up here. And now I'm on the beginning. Let's take a look now how easy and fast is assembling of that printer. Take a top part and turn it around. Then take axis and connect the motor and limit switch. Everything is marked, so I got nothing to fail. Then just push cable through the hole and screw 3 screws, but not tighten them yet. And then repeat that step on other 2 axes. Now prepare bottom part and put on the whole printer. Be sure that logo on table and LCD screen are turned on same direction. Then just screw the axis to bottom part with another 6 screws. And then another 3 screws from the top. When I have all 18 screws in position I tie them, so everything fit on its position before tightening. Now continue with parallel arms. Screw two arms on each side of each carriage. I forgot to tell here that all pre-assembled parts around the arms is secured with Loctite, so screws will not lose due to vibrations. When we got all the arms or carriages, screw the printing head on other side of arms. Cooling fan is on left side and turbo fan is on right. Then connect four connectors from printing head, plug two connectors from heated bed and plug and secure Teflon tube into extruder. Printer is now assembled, but need to screw another 4 screws for the spool holder. And that's it, we got assembled printer. I don't need more than 10 to 15 minutes to assemble. There are only 21 screws, 6 connectors and 1 teflon tube to plug and we are ready to calibrate. Before continue I remove protective film from heated bed and LCD screen. Then plug the power cable and turn on the switch. Printer is ready to use after 4 to 5 seconds of booting. LCD is clear and easy to read, but it's not a basic inductive touch screen as we got in our smartphones, but it's a resistive touch screen, so we can activate it with any material. That type of screen got pros and cons, but all that matters for me is that it works. Manual say it's time for auto leveling, so plug the level sensor, which is basically precise switch, to a leveling connector and then attach them on print head with a magnet. Then go to menu, click tools, auto level and once again auto level. Print will detect now 27 points on building plate. During the process it go few times home to activate limit switch. Entire auto leveling process lasts about 4 minutes. When the leveling is finished on the LCD blinking second icon, Z0, so click it to set zero position. 
Of course we need to remove leveling sensor and printer let us know that. After confirm it go down to zero position, but there stay a few millimeter between table and nozzle, so click next blinking icon adjust Z. Now just press plus or minus, you can move for 0.05mm or 0.1mm and lower down so the paper will not move freely anymore. After setup is done click save and printer go to home position. Manual says we are ready to make first print now, so let's mount some spool and insert filament. As I say inserting is very easy on that extruder. Then insert SD card which come into USB card reader with the printer. I was worried about that micro SD. They can be annoying to insert, but not here. A piece of card always stay out of printer housing, so inserting and removing that tiny card isn't a problem. Now I click preheat. It heat up in less than 2 minutes. Then click print to access to SD card files. There are two sliced models on the SD card for first test, so I try to print them. First layer is a bit too thin, so I use one awesome function of that printer. During print you can easily set the first layer high, it's so easy to get perfect first layer. During print you can also change temperatures, speeds, filaments and so on. After first print was finished I got problems to get model out of heated bed, so I helped with the spatula, but make mistake, it leaves some gently traces on heated bed. So make yourself a favor and throw the spatula away from that bed. Different materials like PLA, ABS, PG and TPU stick really awesome on that plate, but when it cools down parts come off almost by itself. Then I try to turn off the printer during work and move printing head away from the model. Next day I try continue function. It need about 15 minutes to come on right part of G-code, then extrude lot of material and then start printing somewhere mid-air and also the part unstick from the bed. I may fail with the moving head, so I try once more, but without success. I need to figure it out how to continue printing. Then I try to change filament during print, and it's so easy. While printing just click settings and change, printing head will go away from the model. Then click unload to remove filament from extruder, replace the spool and then load, so a new filament come to the nozzle. Then just clean the nozzle and click play button and it will continue printing from the spot you stop it. Of course I try to print a few benches, calibrating cube and other models out of different material. But before I show you the result I show you what you get on the SD card. There are all the videos and photos about assembling and first use. Then we got here test models. And in software folder we can find a rep tier host firmware configuration file and slicing software. Look like Cura version of FL Sun. We got all presets for that printer, so just import any STL file and slice. Basically I was using S3D software, it works also from that printer, we just need to change a few settings. But I got much better result with the Cura, so I think I'll use that software from now. I don't show you the details of slicing software, because as I say it's new for me. But need to expose print sequence function, I will definitely use that function, so I can print more models on the bed, one by one, to get better quality like printing all at once. Ok, let's take a look at the result now. That's what I print with different materials, speeds and slicing settings. You won't believe me, but that bench is the only failed print, but just because I use the PLA settings for printing PETG, so it unsticks from the 50 degree heated bed. On first testing piece we can see that it make quite nice bottom, top and perimeter surface. Also on the screw got amazing details. Here on that 50% scale screw I playing with extruder and it do their job just good I think. Let's see the benches now. First one is sliced into S3D and printed with 50mm per second. It look good, but with problems I think my old printer make, that gaps between top layer and huge spots on layer changing. But now see that's an S3D problem, I try many different settings, but not figured out yet where the problem is. But if I compare bench printed with same speed, the one sliced in Cura look much better. That bench is printed in 0-1 layer high, it look great, but here are some under extruded areas, because I set too long retraction distance, and here on the overhang got some cooling issues, but more about that later. Then I try to print TPU Benchy and Octopussy, both come out nicely, but need to increase retraction for a millimeter or two. Also PTG Benchy come out nicely, and finally I tried the ABS Benchy, 
It actually worked in first try without any gadgets for better beta dashing. First cube I tried to print with 60mm per second and come out really nice, but here on X got some cooling issue. Then I try with 100mm per second. It, lo it still look good, but on X got even bigger cooling issue. And finally I go to 150mm per second. It looks like it can still print useful print at that speed, but not without cooling modification. Look like that printer got biggest problem with cooling. Before I make any upgrades I just try to replace the nozzle. But I don't got any nozzle like that, so I just use an E3D one. Changing the nozzle isn't easiest job, because we got no place to grip the heated block. But after the nozzle was replaced, set zero position once again and instantly got much better result. I don't know why, but cooling problems isn't that visible. Here in that clip you can see that this week cooling fan blow air into the nozzle and not into the printed part. I will definitely make another fan duct and use the turbo fan which is much more powerful. What about size? First cube I printed was a bit too big, but we can simply change printing size into menu, select settings and more, then just push buttons to print bigger or smaller. But that settings effect on X and Y axis. If we want to change only one we need to make firmware changes. I just make one change and come pretty close to perfect size. It's good to me, cause I think it doesn't make sense to catch hundreds on 3D print. I don't want to talk too much about printing results, because I got no much experience with different 3D printers. All I got is that GTEC about 3 to 4 years old which still work good to me, for printing useful prints like holders, housing and so on. So what can I say about that FL Sun Q5 for the end? My opinion is that it's an awesome printer for the price, especially friendly to beginners, because we can print 20 to 30 minutes after unbox, and we don't need to set up anything into firmware and slicing software. Just assemble, slice and print. I really didn't think that 3D printing becomes so easy in that few years. One of biggest pros on that printer is absolutely heated bed. It heat up to 50 degree before nozzle reach 210 degree and every material I try stick to the bed unbelievably and when it's cold the part come off by itself. I don't need to talk about how nice the bottom layer come out. I also like the extruder because changing filament and cleaning is so easy. Another great function is that we can set Z height during print. Entire printer is made out of steel so it's quite solid and can print with bigger speed with smaller effect to quality. It's my first delta and I need to say that I like how little space it takes up on the table. It just need about 30 by 35 cm and about 80 cm in height, complete with spool. Another great property of that printer is its silence. We can't hear the steppers at all. All we can hear is the fan and extruder motor if we set high retraction speed. I'm so excited about that printer that I hardly to find cons. One of biggest is definitely a cooling fan. It's a low power fan and the fan duct isn't designed properly, but replace the fan and design new duct will be a small and easy upgrade. That's about that for today. I got bunch of clips and time lapses, but the video is already become too long. I want to expose the hardware in that video, so I hope you find some information you're looking for. Otherwise, feel free to ask into comment. I also didn't tell you all the specification because you can check under video description or just click the link to see more details, specification and its great price. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.